Hello and welcome to Auto Shenanigans. How the devil are you? Have you had a good week? My name is John. Thank you very much for joining me for another exciting episode of Secrets of the Motorway. In this week's episode, we're continuing our journey around the M60. If you missed part one, here's a link. Last week, we ended at Simister Island, an interchange where the M60, M62 and the M66 all meet. Here's the thing. Have you ever noticed the different colored lanes at Simister Island? Apparently, it's to help drivers navigate the junction. Anyway, today we'll be starting at junction 19 of the M60, but before the M60 was a thing, this junction used to be the start of the M66 motorway. It wouldn't be until the 90s that the M60 was conceptualized and an extension of the motorway was built from junctions 19 down to 23, allowing for the M60 circle to be completed. It's the circle of Manchester. Interestingly, the motorway extension was supposed to be part of the M66, but the M60 had all been finalised, so when it was completed and opened, they just named it the M60. Junction 20 is missing a set of slip roads, and in this case, I think they really are missing. The original junction design featured a set of east-facing slip roads, but when it came to the construction, they were left out. And I'm not really sure why. It would be a pretty big oversight to make, so maybe it was a cost-cutting measure? I don't really know. Between junctions 21 and 22 is where we find the Reach Print Works. The company can trace its roots as far back as 1832, but wouldn't make use of the building by the M60 until 1989. Before they moved in, the building was used as an engineering and manufacturing plant by a company called Ferranti, who made stuff suited to national power grid systems. Ferranti started in 1885 and quickly found the need to expand the business. They were based in London at the time, but found land was too expensive, so in 1896 they decided to build a factory up here at Hollywood. The main part of their business was large-scale power transformers and power distribution, but they moved into defence electronics during those pesky war things. This set them up quite nicely, as it turned out, because by 1951 they developed one of the first digital computers. It was called the Ferranti Mark I, but most people called it the Manchester Electronic Computer. The Mark I used a 20-bit word stored as a single line of dots of electric charges settled on the surface of a Williams tube display, each cathodic tube storing 64 lines of dots. Instructions were stored in a single word, while numbers were stored in two of the stator. Words. Every seventh conductor being connected by a non-reversible tremi pipe to the differential girdle spring on the up end of the gram meters. Sure. It seems that Junction 23 has got five slip roads. There are three where the motorway meets the A635, and a short distance away there are further two slip roads that link the motorway to the A6140. They're all marked as Junction 23 on road signs, so clearly it was an intentional move. But I'm not sure why this is considered as one junction. Just before we get to Junction 24, and the motorway passes the Ordenshaw Reservoirs. There are three reservoirs here, built between 1877 and 1882, and originally between them they covered an area of around 250 acres. However, when the motorway came along, they drained and filled the section of reservoir number three to allow for its construction. Across the motorway and opposite the reservoir is now a housing estate that's built on land that was reclaimed from the reservoir. Junction 24 is where the M60 meets the M67, the failed Manchester to Sheffield motorway. I've already covered the M67 in a different video, so instead, let's turn our attention to the witch-cursed viaducts that you'll spot as you drive along the motorway when it crosses the River Tame. The legend goes that a local witch was most unhappy about a railway being constructed across the Tame Valley, so she put a curse on the viaduct Viaduct and anyone who dared count its arches. I guess back then, Karens were known as witches. Anyway, the viaduct itself was constructed in 1875 and sits on the Hope Valley Railway Line, a Transpennine railway that links Manchester to Sheffield. Remarkably, the viaduct is still in use today. Well, maybe on the odd occasion. If you're watching this 20 years from now, there are several rail strikes going on at the moment, hence the joke, but I'm sure you've sorted it by now. Interestingly, <coughs> I don't know. Interestingly, in June 1980, LNER 4472 would cross over the viaduct on its way from Manchester to York. And if you're not a massive railway nerd, then LNER 4472 is better known as the Flying Scotsman. Up next is the... what the f*** is that? Is that a junction? Apparently it's Junction 25, but something is amiss here, I suspect. And indeed, it would appear that this junction is the result of a cancelled motorway. We're missing the A6M. The idea for this motorway came around way back in 1945, but it's always been on the low priority list. It stayed on this list throughout the 60s and the 70s, but somebody did check in on it in the late 70s, only to realise that, yeah, no, it can stay there. Had this motorway been built, it would have run from Junction 25 of the M60 and round the back of Hazel Grove before linking up with the A6. And it seemed like a very good idea because 
because it would have allowed traffic to avoid driving in and out of the already heavily congested Stockport. On the M60, you might notice a set of ghost slip roads which were installed in preparation for the A6M. Had it been built to plan, the motorway probably would have gone over the junction on its way to the A6. It's worth noting that at the time, the M60 wasn't a thing. We would have had the M66 taking its place with the M63 heading to the west. The M66 would have linked up with the A6M via a continuation through the junction. And this might explain the rather stupid design where one of the slip roads puts you into lane three of the main carriageway. This is a very dangerous design, but I don't think it was intentional. Take a look at this diagram and we can see that our dodgy slip road would potentially have been one of the main carriageways. It was certainly put in place in preparation for the A6M, but following the project's cancellation, I think they built it and then just connected it to the roundabout as a last minute thing. I'm not 100% sure, but it's a sensible theory, right? <laughs> How the devil are you? <laughs> Anyway, Junction 26 is another stupid junction design, although to be fair to the M60, in this case, it's probably down to the A560. In terms of slip roads, there are westbound entry and exits. That's your lot. What makes this a super fun junction is the crisscrossing of the A560, which often leads to traffic going in the wrong direction, sometimes onto the motorway. Right next door to the junction is Welkin Mill, a cotton spinning mill that was built in the early 1900s at a time when the cotton industry was booming. Unfortunately, the First World War would take its toll and the industry started to struggle and never really got back to how it was pre-war time. As a result, several mills across the country were facing closure and Welkin Mill was one of those. The Bank of England would step in and by merging over 100 independent mill businesses, they created the Lancashire Cotton Corporation. They would close many of the struggling mills, but 53 would remain open and Welkin Mill was one of the lucky few. By 1967, textile and fabric production ended at the site and it was converted into a print works. By 2009, printing would end at Welkin Mill, but the property has lived on because it's been leased out to various organisations for use as storage or as a base of operations. Today, that's still the case with an escape room business, a dance studio and a vintage clothing retailer all trading out of the mill. Junction 27, or the Portwood Roundabout, is the last junction on the M60, or it would be if it wasn't for the fact it's a circle and it never bloody ends. Junction 27 is also hiding something buried underneath there are the remains of 2,000 bodies and that's because there used to be a church complete with graveyards situated right here. The church was built in 1848 but has long since been demolished. The graveyard however still remains, or at least what's below the surface does. And that's about it for the M60 really. As you approach Junction 1 you cross the finish line by passing underneath the Stockport Viaduct. The Stockport Viaduct was constructed using 11 million bricks and is reportedly one of the largest brick structures in the world. With its completion in 1840 it's certainly fair to say it was here long before the motorway and as luck would have it you can just about squeeze three lanes for traffic through each of its arches so the M60 uses two of these. And there we are then guys, that's all we've got time for this week. I hope you liked the video. If you did, there's a button specifically for that. And if you haven't subscribed already, please consider doing so. That would be wicked sweet awesome. Enjoy the rest of your week, whatever it is you get up to. My name's John, you've been watching Auto Shenanigans, and I'll see you guys next time for another episode of Secrets of the Motorway. Till then, take care. I'm gonna get out of here before I get snowed in. See you soon, bye-bye.